Evolution by natural selection is the theory of the origin of diversity of all organisms on Earth. It is the scientific consensus among scientists and is what is taught in most schools, and for good reason. The evidence for it is just so overwhelming. Uh, it is considered a fact by many. According to evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins, all reputable scientists believe in evolution. However, despite evolution being the consensus, it is often misrepresented either by its opponents or just a scientifically illiterate audience. And so in this video, I'll be tackling misconceptions about evolution to hopefully inform you and so we can know better and so, and so we avoid misrepresenting the topic whenever it's brought up or realize when others are deliberately misrepresenting it. Now I've brought this up in my latest video which you should definitely check out. Uh, now, this is arguably the most common argument or misrepresentation of the theory of evolution. Many may say that evolution is just a theory, and so should not be taught or even considered as a scientific fact. Well, the problem with this argument is that a scientific theory, which is what evolution by natural selection is, is the highest praise a study can get. Evolution may just be a scientific theory, but is backed up by so much proof in the fossil record, the DNA record, and even in the observable world we have today. Using all these proofs, the interpretation of all these proofs is that we evolved from other life forms. The term scientific theory is also different from how one uses the term theory in the conventional and usual sense. But even with that, the conventional use in any theory is not the same as a guess or an assumption. When one makes a theory, it's often backed up by evidence, and the theory is the theoretical product, or explanation rather, of all those evidences combined. However, this isn't the same as making an assumption. Ask people, what do you mean by evolution? Because the word can mean so many different things. If it means change over time, count me in, we see that. If you mean microevolution, adaptation within a type, count me in, we see that. But if you mean molecules to man without any intelligence, count me out because I don't think there's evidence for it. In fact, I think there's evidence against it. Let me just give you a few reasons to believe that the Darwinian, neo-Darwinian view of the world doesn't make sense. Number one, believe it or not, is the fossil record. The major body plans appeared instantaneously, virtually, in the fossil record called the Cambrian explosion. Um, they just pop into existence, it seems, without any fossil precursors. Now, evolution, and for some reason, the Big Bang, are misrepresented as the origins of life. I often hear people say that, oh, how could an explosion such as the Big Bang create life? And in the case of evolution, how could life just spontaneously appear like that? Uh, ironically, creationism teaches the same except with a creator. Now, the reason why this argument frustrates me is because we cannot have a good argument or even a good conversation about such interesting subjects where the topic is deliberately misrepresented and portrayed so poorly now to answer this, I will say that evolution and the Big Bang are separate theories and are not the origin of life. The Big Bang is as far as we can trace in the observable universe. Evolution is the origin of diversity of life, not the origin of life. The Big Bang happened 13.8 billion years ago. And as for the earliest life forms on Earth, well, they can be traced to around 3 billion years ago. Many, many years, many, many billions of years in between. As for what apologist Frank Turek said about the Cambrian explosion, he misrepresents the Cambrian explosion as the origin of life or the genesis of life. And since it has the term explosion, he, I assume, he assumes that it was spontaneous. In truth, despite being called an explosion, it is not, obviously, it's not a literal one, as we all know, and, and nor was it instant. It took around 15 to 20 million years, a lot of time. Now, 20 million years, is consider considerably short compared to you know other time periods in history but 20 million years is a lot of time and in that time we had very 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 primitive organisms nowhere as complex as today this puts into perspective just how slow evolution can be despite 20 million years being insignificant in the age of the universe it has only had the most basic of organisms the Cambrian, around, you know, 540 million years ago, is nowhere near as rich as today, in terms of its species, and especially the complexity of it. 
I have heard creationists mock evolution by saying, unless I see a monkey give birth to a human in the zoo, I will not believe in evolution. Another one, although this one is more of a question, a valid one for that matter, it asks, why are there still monkeys if we came from monkeys? You know? Now let me explain. Humans and modern apes come from a common ancestor. Instead of humans evolving from modern apes, the apes we have today are not really the same as a hundred thousand years ago or before the dawn of modern humans. Despite chimpanzees and humans being cousins, as they share a lot in the DNA sequence, humans did not come from chimpanzees, we just share a lot in common. To put this in perspective, your cousin is related to you, but you didn't come from your, you, you didn't come from your cousin. In Charles Darwin's book The Origin of Species, he mentions speciation, where one organism branches off from another. This can be best seen in phylogenetic charts. To say evolution is not observable, therefore cannot be a scientific theory or fact according to the criteria of a scientific theory, is quite frankly a fool's errand, and it shows a level of ignorance and lack of understanding of the study. Evolution may not be observable firsthand, like gravity for example, but evidences for the occurrence of evolution are most certainly present. Now as I mentioned before, evolution can take so many millions of years that we can't observe it firsthand. Now, we can't see a bacteria turn into a human because it doesn't take 70 or less years for that to happen. But even with all this, rapid evolution is a thing. So if you want observable proof or something, well, rapid evolution is a thing. And so I'll link a video in the description from, from a YouTuber named Trey the Explainer on rapid evolution. So if you, you know, want to see something change in your lifetime, well, there's something for you. I have heard that there are creationists who do see natural selection as a real occurrence wherein a characteristic is favored and thus the species will improve on this on the next generation. Uh, for example, our ancestors, for our ancestors rather, intelligence was favored by natural selection as thus we are more, more, we are more intelligent than our ancestors. But you know, you just described evolution. But to tell you, evolution is the product of natural selection. When a trait is favored, evolution takes place. This is why you and I don't have wings or X-Men mutations. Evolution, no matter how beneficial or detrimental, is evolution. And evolution, no matter how big or small, in the change is still evolution. Now, in Charles Darwin's book, The Origin of Species, there's a part often taken out of context. Uh, and so I'll read it to you. To suppose that the eye, with all its inimitable contri uh, contrivances for adjusting the focus to different distances, for admitting different amounts of light, and for the correction of spherical and chromatic aber aberration, could have been formed by natural selection, seems, I freely confess, is absurd in the highest degree. Now, this is often taken out of context, as if Darwin approves intelligent design. The problem is, even if, the, even if Darwin does approve of intelligent design for the eye, which, spoiler, he doesn't, it doesn't disprove evolution, it just means that we have some work to do in trying to learn more about the complexity of the human eye. Now in truth, this quote is, uh, from Darwin is trying to set the reader up. It's emphasizing how complex the human eye is. Now currently, the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. The Cambrian explosion was 540 million years ago. The eye and for that matter, complex organs are not the same for, uh, 540 million years ago. The eye was once just something of a light sensor, and it improved and improved. Uh, for example, the eyes of Anomalacarids uh, of the Cambrian are not the same as arthropods today. It improves if natural selection favors it. In our case, it did. Now Darwin, or anyone for that matter, doesn't imply the human eye in its current form is perfect in any way, shape, or form. The human eye has evolved into a retina, you know, uh, layers of cells at the back of the human eye. It took billions of years to have eyes as good as ours, and it's still nowhere near as perfect. I have often heard that evolution is random, and so there's no purpose, and so we're just an accident. Now this is wrong because evolution isn't random, but to be clear, evolution doesn't have a goal either. 
we are not the final or the ultimate product of evolution, we're just another species in a long list. 99% of all organisms that have ever lived have gone extinct. Humans will continue, probably, to evolve, though we, we will never see it firsthand. Evolution isn't random because of natural selection, and evolution can't happen, for the most part, without natural selection. As for purpose, well, the beauty of science is it only answers what and why, but you can create your own purpose to fill that. Now, creationists will often say that they believe in a phenomena called microevolution, wherein they wherein there are variations from generation to the next, and they reject macroevolution as they call it, uh, because they can't see a molecule turning into a human, for example. Now, I'll explain that later though, but notice how macro and microevolution are only terms used by the religious. Yes, they are real terms, but they're only terms usually used by uh, creationists rather, that's what I meant. As I've said before, no matter how small or big of a change it is, it's still evolution. They both happen for the same reason, and there's no reason, reason rather, to differentiate them. In reality, this thing you call macroevolution is just microevolution except happens more times, which leads me to my next point. If you mean microevolution, adaptation within a type, count me in, we see that. But if you mean molecules to man without any intelligence, count me out. Now this is one of the most frustrating misconceptions. I don't know if people are just not literate enough to or deliberately misrepresent evolution to make their argument sound more, you know, to make their argument more sound, I guess. This is how macroevolution, as they call it, is portrayed. How could molecules turn into a human? Forgetting that it took millions or even billions of years. And in the case of molecule to human, it took almost 3 billions yeah, it took almost 3 billions of years in between. Even something like bacteria is already complex to be considered the origin of life. And as for the origin of life, evolution isn't the answer for that. Evolution is the origin of the diversity of life. Going from point A to point B isn't a good comparison for a molecule to a human. And if you bother to study phylogenetics or even just basic biology, you'd at least be more familiar with this or be more knowledgeable more knowledgeable, therefore you wouldn't have to bring this argument up. Now I saved the best for last. I've heard it said that there are no transitional fossils, and for those people, enjoy the slideshow. Okay, to explain this, no, it's not true that there are no transitional species. When the theory of evolution was proposed, scientists theorized that an animal would fill the missing link of fish to amphibian. And guess what? We found it. Tiktaalik. This doesn't mean everything scientists predict is true, it just means that we can find and we have found transitional species. The term missing link is only really used by opponents of evolution. You see, we have so much evidence of organisms evolving into, a, into you know, another. What kind of transition are you even looking for? You see, if you skip certain steps and parts of a long line, you will undoubtedly misrepresent or misunderstand it. And of course, it sounds absurd if you, if you say molecule to human, forgetting everything that happened in between. A deliberate misrepresentation of such a beautiful line of history. Conclusion. Now, I made this video to inform. To clarify the biggest and most common misconceptions or just questions rather about evolution by natural selection now if any creationists are watching or just believe in, in another alternative rather i hope we can all better understand one another's perspective because if one side is deliberately misrepre uh, being misrepresented we can't have proper conversations let alone debates about such interesting topics so if any creationists are watching make a video then about misconceptions i or others have have about your viewpoint although i will say with the evidence it doesn't point to your viewpoint being scientifically accurate 
but I hope we can better understand one another. At, uh, we can better understand one another's uh, sides, rather, as it can help have better discourse and conversations without misrepresenting one another. I would also highly encourage everyone to be more literate about what they believe and what they're opposed to. But anyways, that's all I have to say. I have been the ITist, and remember to live by what you see.